Hello dear friend, uh, we talked about the atrial fibrillation in the prior two uh, videos. Now let's uh, continue with the treatment of atrial fibrillation. What options do we have? After we recognize the atrial fibrillation, depends to the heart rate of the patient, depends to the uh, risk of a stroke for the patient, we decide about the blood thinner, we decide about medication to control the heart rate, there are circumstances that the patient goes to atrial fibrillation and comes out of it. We call it paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. And there is a group of patients that when they go to atrial fibrillation, the heart rate goes very fast. When they come out of it, it goes very slow. And that's going to be cumbersome. We cannot give the medication to control the fast one because when they come out of it, the slow gets worse. In those circumstances, either we take care of atrial fibrillation as much as we can to prevent the fast one, or we go ahead and put a pacemaker to prevent the slow one and then have free hand to give medication and control the fast one. And we try to keep the heart rate between the kind of acceptable range, not too slow, not too fast, with the pacemaker to prevent the slow and with the medication to control the fast. And if we can prevent the atrial fibrillation, either with medical therapy, there are different lines of medication to control the atrial fibrillation, and each line has its own possibility to be successful or not. But in general, when we go from first line to second, from second to third or the fourth line, which is the most uh, effective one, we have a little bit more possibility of side effects. Depends to the patient's heart and other comorbidities, we may decide one rather than the other line to use. Sometimes we use combination of two lines together. In general, uh, either recipe we use for medication, it may work 50 to 60% of the time to prevent the atrial fibrillation. Sometimes if the atrial fibrillation is really sporadic and comes once in a blue moon, we may use pill as needed also. But if they come more often, either we use regular medication or we have to go to the other option, which is uh, intervention, which is ablation for atrial fibrillation. And what is ablation for atrial fibrillation is that we basically do the procedure majority of time under anesthesia and we send a couple of tiny catheters from the groins up to the heart and we try to go to the left top chamber of the heart because in majority of time atrial fibrillation comes out of left top chamber or le left atrium, the place that there are four veins connected to the back of the top chamber and they bring the oxygenated blood back to the heart from lungs and at the junction of those veins to the back of the top chamber of the heart there are muscle sleeves that they are responsible to triggering this electrical activity that they cause the atrial fibrillation and we go with the catheter there and we ablate around those veins and we try to keep the fibrillation way uh, fibrillation waves not coming to the rest of the heart as I said, medical therapy is 50 to 60% successful. Ablation is usually successful around 70% for the people that they go in and out of atrial fibrillation. And if they are in atrial fibrillation for a long time, maybe a year or more than a year, the chance of success drops down to maybe 50% depends to the size of the top chamber if you have any other valve problem in the heart also that determines the success rate for atrial fibrillation when we do ablation after the ablation patient most of the time goes home same day and is able to do regular activity at home after the procedure doesn't need to stay in the bed for a couple of days but we ask the patient to take it easy that everything settles down in general, the first three months after ablation, we call it blanking period because if there is a little bit that your fibrillation could be because of inflammation due to our ablation, that we want to settle it down before we want to judge about success rate. And after three months of blanking period is the time that we want to really look and see if there is any recurrence of atrial fibrillation or not and we may continue with medication we may be able to come off some of the medication after the ablation now with the recent studies we know that overall the atrial fibrillation affects the dementia and affects the longevity of life so our threshold has come lower 
has become lower in regard of considering ablation and decreasing the chance of recurrent atrial fibrillation if we can with ablation. So, uh, is there any patient that goes in atrial fibrillation and we leave it alone? Yes, there are certain group of patients, especially elderly, that if none of the medication we do works, or if we feel that the chance of success with the medication and with the ablation is very low, we may let the atrial fibrillation go on and just continue with the blood thinner and some medication making sure their heart doesn't go very fast and that become permanent atrial fibrillation. People that they go in and out of atrial fibrillation, around 30% of them, finally they go to atrial fibrillation and they don't come out of it, unfortunately. But the important thing is that if there is any episode of atrial fibrillation, we want to do what we can do as soon as we can and prevent of atrial fibrillation becoming a permanent atrial fibrillation in the future for the patient. So this was atrial fibrillation. We talk about other topics in future videos. I hope uh, these are helpful for you and for your family and gives you some orientation what's the options uh, that you have if you get any of this uh, disease that we discuss on these videos and uh, we would be happy to help you i'm dr russell mokaberry have a nice day take care of yourself bye